Hey y'all, it's Raj with EV365. Today we're gonna to take a look at the 2023 Mini Cooper SE. All right, so here's the 2023 Mini Cooper SE. Now this version of the vehicle has been out for a few years. They did a redesign after the first year and it was built on the existing Mini Cooper S platform. So it looks and feels just like a regular engine powered mini um, and really from the outside you can't even tell it's an electric vehicle other than some of the yellow badging that you'll see on the wheels over here and back here you see the yellow badge and the s and the cooper s is actually yellow um, but yeah it's a great looking vehicle this one here is in the British Racing Green. Um, you'll see over here, this is where the gas cap typically is. And what the SE's got is the charging. And it's got the J1772 port for home charging or level two charging. And you can get up to 7.4 kilowatts on that. And then you can pull this out over here for CCS charging and you can get up to 50 kilowatts there. And of course, 50 kilowatts isn't super fast nowadays for electric vehicles, but this Mini Cooper SE has a about a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery. So it's not super big. That only gives you about 115 miles of range. But at that 50 kilowatts, you can get it charged from zero to 80 or 10 to 80 in about 30 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes. And, and the Cooper does hold its speed pretty well. Uh, when it's charging, you know, obviously after 80, it's going to drop off a little bit. Um, so this vehicle, you know, with that short range is probably not practical for everybody, but if you're just driving the vehicle around town, short commutes to and from work, if you've got charging at home or at work, um, it is a really fun vehicle to drive. Um, this one will run you about 30,900 starting. And then there's two trim levels above that, but that bottom level comes really loaded. And we'll show you some of the features inside. This one's the signature trim. So it does have a little more of the bells and whistles, but honestly, that first model is pretty loaded. If you're not too interested in the sunroof, then that's probably the way to go. Or in the slightly larger vehicles, you can see this one comes with the 17 inch uh, wheels as opposed to the 16 inch. So yeah, that's the Mini Cooper SE from the outside. So now we'll just go in the vehicle and this one's got the racing stripes as well, as you can see, um, which was an add-on and the roof rails, which was a factory add-on, which I'd highly recommend uh, the roof rails uh, installed by Mini because their roof rack is super easy to use. Um, and I actually did drive this vehicle for a year, so very familiar with it, enjoyed it. And at this price point, it is the best driving vehicle, I would say. Um, and I know that's a matter of opinion for folks, but you're going to get the most pep out of this thing. It can go zero to 60 in about 6.9 seconds, you know, which is not super fast, but it's enough to have some fun. Um, and the handling is just so much better than the other vehicles in this range, which you're thinking of the Bolt and maybe some of the early Ionics, the Leaf. Um, and the other thing about it, it used to come with the rebate. Uh, but now under the new program, it won't because the mini, these particular models of mini in 2024 20, is going to be the last year they build it in the Oxford facility in the UK, which is the original factory where these minis were built. Uh, 2024 is going to be the last year they build this model and then it's going to be built out of China with a partnership that BMW's got with a company out there. Um, but yeah, since it's built overseas... Uh, we don't get the rebate here in the U.S. anymore, but you still may get some state dealership rebates. All right, let's go check out the inside and the trunk. All right, so now let's go inside. We'll open the door here. And one thing you can see, by the way, hi. Uh, one thing you can see is this vehicle is built solid. I'm barely pushing on that door. It closes and it sounds solid. It closes solid. This honestly is probably the most well-built feeling vehicle that I've ever owned. And as you can see, just as soon as you sit inside the Mini, um, it looks really cool, it feels premium. 
You can see the seats have this leatherette and cloth combo, which looks great. I'm not sure if they actually offer this combo of seat anymore on the 2024 version, um, but they do still have some good options that you can pick from. And again, as I said, built very solid. You can hear that door close. And as we mentioned here, let's turn this on. There's a cool little sound. So that obviously tells you it's a mini, it's electric, it's exciting. Um, and as you can see, what they've done is they've built all this on the existing platform. So you still get a lot of the tactile, these AV air, airplane style toggles in the vehicle to turn lights on and off. And it makes it very easy to use. So if you're somebody transitioning from a traditional vehicle over to a EV and you're not used to all everything being on the screen, this is a great compromise. Um, you still have a lot of tactile buttons and it makes it very easy to use. Um, even clicking between driving modes, which the mini's got four driving modes. It's got sport, the mid range, um, green, and then green plus. Green plus is where it cuts off the AC and other things like that to give you extended range. I drive on mid or sport and honestly, I haven't seen a mileage difference going to sport. So I'd almost say keep it on sport and you can feel the handling is improved, the speed is improved, or the acceleration is improved. Um, and it's just a lot more fun to drive, to be honest. <laughs> um, and the Mini is front wheel drive. So one thing I'll mention when you do drive, you do feel a little torque if you accelerate kind of hard, torque steering will vibrate a little. So that's the only one little complaint I have when driving. Um, you know, obviously if they went with a rear wheel drive, that may have not happened, but they built this on the existing platform. So they filled batteries up here in this transmission uh, tunnel over here. So you still got the hump in the middle of the car because of that. Um, and they kind of filled the batteries in through it and over in the back, almost like in a T formation behind the seats. So they did raise the vehicle a little bit. And, uh, but you can't tell from the outside, they kind of extended the fenders uh, just slightly, the black part. And so you can't really tell. Oh yeah, and one thing I forgot to mention when I was going over the tactile switches is the Mini does have um, this screen that they put in. It replaces the original sp the speedometer that's on the gas-powered vehicles. Um, and this screen is touch. Um, it's, it's very responsive. It's super clear. You know, it's not the biggest screen in the world. Um, but obviously, you can do everything from the screen as well. And you've got buttons here to control everything on the screen and the wheel. Um, so you just have a lot of options on how to control your content. Um, and then here you can see it comes with, it's got Sirius XM as well. You get a free subscription of Sirius XM for a year. Um, and so you've got this screen that's very clear. You've got the screen over here behind the wheel, kind of the heads up screen. That one is not very, uh, you know, that's not updatable necessarily. And I'm not sure that this is either. Mini's not doing like over the air updates or anything like that. So I think what you see is what you get as far as the tech inside the vehicle but the car does also come with an app and you can do a lot of stuff from the app to control the vehicle like you're charging your charging speed charging times unlock turn on the climate control um so that mini app is is essential to have as well so yeah but the car comes fully loaded it's got cruise control apple carplay wireless doesn't have android yet um and I, i'd imagine this model is not going to um it's got dual climate control and this all, all of this comes standard on the uh, the lowest trim, the $30,900 trim. So, um, and then as you upgrade, you get some options, you know, to change some of the inside paneling and you've got a few options there. And now, you know, since we've ordered this, Mini allows for a little more individual customization. So if you want, you can add stripes, you can add the roof rails, you can upgrade your stereo. This one came with the Harman Kardon stereo which of course in this small cabin, it sounds really good. It's fun. Um, this one with the signature trim does come with the dual moon roof. The, the back one does not open. This one does, as you can see the covers there are manual. Um, and speaking of that, the other thing that's manual, which this is the only thing that's not premium in this car. And I can imagine they only did it because of weight is the seat. You've got to control it, um, manually. So there's no way to, yeah, there you go. I'm already all the way back, but you've got to move it up and down using levers here and move it front and back using levers. Um, but yeah, that's the inside of the mini. 
and in, in the front space is not an issue um, no matter how tall you are this is definitely built for the driver and the driver's passenger and you feel great in here um, we'll kind of pop out so you can see the back a little bit let me move the seat up And the, to pop the seat back, it's real easy. You just do that. So it's easy to get in now. Let's turn the car off. Yeah, and so there's the back seat. And we've hauled around two kids back here for a year. And we have had no problems. They can get in and out. We've got a seven-year-old, and she can even get to the door, pull the seat down. And plenty of, honestly, plenty of leg room if the first person, the person in the front seat is willing to just to compromise a little bit for these shorter trips. Obviously, you're not going to do long road trips in here. Um, and then those seats do drop down. And so if you need to get a bunch of storage, you can fit quite a bit in there. And we'll, we'll show you that in a separate video, a storage video. Hello again. We'll pop that trunk just so you can see it. And like any hatchback, so when you first open it, it's not huge. That's about 8.7 cubic feet of space. Mini has done something cool where you can push these seats up. And there's a lever that'll hold the street seats a little further up and upright. So you can fill, fit something more square in there. Um, we've got the rubber mats added. You can lift this panel up so it sits a little flat. And then there's storage back there for your uh, chargers and things like that. And it's a pretty decent sized storage, to be honest. Um, back seats are in a, say, about a 60-40 split. And they fall down individually just by pulling this lever. It's real easy to use. And it does come with a cover to cover stuff in the back if you need to. But we've taken that off for right now. So that's the front of the mini, I mean the trunk of the mini. And now let's go look at the front. Um, I'll open that door. All right, so this is how you open the front. Again, just like the back, you pull, the, pull it twice. Everything is manual in that regard. Right. So let's go up here and a mini, just a great looking car. And when you open that uh, hood, you know, it comes up over the, over the headlights. So that's kind of, you know, that old style vehicle. So there's the front, there isn't one. So again, since this is not a ground up EV, they put the motor and started the batteries and all the stuff that works the electrical components of the car in here. So you're not gonna have front storage. Um, so again, it just, if you were looking at this and you didn't know, you would just think it was the, uh, the gas powered vehicle. There you go. So yeah, that's the 2024 Mini Cooper SE. Let's go close that boot. Give y'all one last look at it. Oh yeah. And while you're back here, you'll see there's no exhaust or tailpipes because it is electric. So yeah, we'll have a separate charging, uh, a separate video on this for charging. Um, just a quick video to go over the speeds, maybe some charging etiquette with a vehicle of this size at, at fast chargers. And then we'll do a video that kind of goes into more depth on the seating and the storage, just so you can get a feel for that. But that is the Mini Cooper SE. So if you're looking for a vehicle that's not out there shouting, hey, I'm an EV, um, that still looks great. It's fun to drive. Um, doesn't have a ton of range, but you know, if you've got just work commute type of travel, um, and you're looking for the, really the most affordable EV out there, this and the Chevy Bolt are the two that are there. Um, this is a great one to get into. I highly recommend it. It's fun to drive. It looks great. It's got character. And again, this is going to be the last couple years that they built this version that we're familiar with over the last 20 years. You know, it's been modified here and there a little bit. Um, it's the last ones that are gonna be built in the Oxford plant. So it's your chance to get in one and drive a fun EV. All right, thanks everybody, bye.